Check one, two. Check one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Gentlemen, make sure you sit near your name. There's the names on both sides. You'll
All right, we've got the Montana State Bobcats, number 14 seed from the West. For all media that are here, uh, a couple of rules and regulations. Um, silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Make sure that you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. And it's helpful with the student athletes if you specify a student athlete or two, that'll make the process easier. And uh, we'll begin with questions for the student athletes. Wait for the microphone. Hi there, guys. Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Uh, Abdul and X, I'll start with you guys. Uh, the last time you know, we saw this group, it was all very celebratory after the Big Sky Conference tournament. Um, can you take me through what the mindset has been like this week in terms of getting back to business and preparing for another game? Um. It's kind of been pretty easy, you know, last week was fun, we enjoyed it, you know, it was definitely a goal we wanted to accomplish, you know, punching our ticket to the big dance, but uh, it's definitely been easy getting back into the swing of things, um, going through, a, you know, another detailed scout, like always, and uh, getting ready for Texas Tech, who's a really good opponent, so um, we've definitely been grinding, getting back to work, you know, working on things, and just trying to figure out ways to attack them. Uh, yeah, same thing Xavier said, man, uh, we accomplished our goal, we knew what we needed to do, and uh, now we set our sights for... Uh, winning a game on uh, Friday. So, yeah, same preparation and everything we go through. And Amin and, and JB, uh, you guys used the word surreal a lot last week. Uh, now that you've been in California for, uh, I guess, a little over a day now, uh, is it starting to feel a little bit more real? And, and how are you trying to, to soak all of this in? Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's feeling real. Like, we're all taking in everything, the environment. We're embracing the atmosphere, all the, all the love we're getting. And right now, we're just taking it a step uh, time just trying to focus on Friday. Thank you. Hi guys, Alex Eshelman with ABC Fox Montana. Just a, kind of a follow up to what Parker just said. What did it feel like uh, just walking up the, sta the steps right now and sitting down to do this interview with, you know, the March Madness sign in the background? Um, <clears throat> it feels crazy, honestly. Like, you know, coming from high school in London. I just never expected that I would be walk, walking upstairs, you know, from uh, doing interviews for March Madness. And, you know, like, I'm just blessed, you know. I just feel blessed to be up here with my brothers going through this together. Uh, John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Uh, for those of you from outside the U.S., uh, how big a deal is March Madness in London or Canada? Um, it's, it's a big deal. Like, everyone's tunes in when it comes to the time of the month. Everyone's excited. Everyone's talking about their brackets, who they predict is going to win. And I feel like it's pretty much the same atmosphere as it is here compared to London as well. So it's pretty big. Hey guys, Carlos Silva from the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Jabril, I guess just uh, or an, anyone that wants to answer this, in terms of Texas Tech and their defense, what's been the biggest focus on what they're able to do and what they've been able to do so far this season? Well, they pretty much rely on their defense to win games. And so we've just been making sure that we know that we have to expect to pass on where our next pass is going to go. Like we, ne we need to know, take care of the ball, and rebound and by doing do certain things we will be able to eliminate the pressures of their defense and just making sure that we know how to get open and catch the ball really make plays Abdul I'll ask you and then open it to, to anybody else um, of course the MSU women play tonight also do you have any plans to, to watch that game and kind of how is exciting how exciting is it that both of the, the programs from Montana State get to play in the NCAA tournament on the same day no, nah, it's just an unbelievable time to be a Bobcat. Like, uh, our sports programs have just been doing so well, so I'll definitely tune in. We're a family. We're a big family. We support one another. Everybody knows everybody, and we're just connected, and I'll definitely support them and tune in. Any other questions for the student-athletes? Got one here, and then... Question for Abdul. Uh, this is Name Brent. and affiliation. This is Brent with USA Today. Uh, as somebody who grew up in Canada, did you watch March Madness growing up as a kid? No, I definitely watched it, man. Some some great some we had some great Canadian hoopers that made March Madness, so we was always tuned in. Uh, ice hockey is the sport they play in Canada, but basketball is slowly growing, and March Madness is a big deal for a lot of us in Canada. 
wanted to follow up on that. There are an increasing number of Canadians in, in college basketball now in the U.S. Why do you think that is? Uh, they just do a great job of uh, just uh, – uh, so, sorry about that. Uh, they just do a great job of developing the game. Uh, we have great um, – Individuals who played Steve Nash, for example, is a, a key a key individual that helps a lot in Canada. And we just we come down south to play a lot of or the south of the border to come play in tournaments and stuff. So just the development is really what's going on. Uh, Abdul, just uh, going back. Name to and that, affiliation oh, again. Carlos Silva from the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Abdul, I, I asked Jabril about this with the the defense, but in terms of what they have on offense, uh, Kevin O'Banner. Or Kevin McCuller, I guess. What, what have you all kind of seen that's made them go on offense? Uh, yeah, they got they got experience and guys who've been to March Madness and who's been through these ropes and stuff. So uh, they're they're an experienced team. We know that, but also we're an experienced group of guys being older and stuff. So uh, it's just going to be our experience versus their experience. And uh, yeah. Any other questions for the student athletes? One more over here. Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Obviously, you guys are, are veteran players on this team, uh, but it's, of course, everybody's still first time to the NCAA tournament. You still have a lot of young guys on this team. How do you guys, as some of the leaders, make sure that everybody kind of keeps their head for, for this environment? Uh, pretty much just always staying poised, you know, uh, staying uh, level-headed through the ups and downs. You know, it's going to be ups and downs throughout the game. It's been ups and downs throughout the season. And uh, just leading by example, uh, you know, our young guys definitely look up to us. And, you know, we got to set an example out there that no matter what we're going through, you know, down or up, we're going to be fine. Any other questions for the student athletes? OK, gentlemen, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. A recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Head coach is coming up in a few. NCAA.veritone.
If downloading's a problem, let me know. But it's not happening. Mac, are you all good on that one? Graham, are you living here? Are you so you just work out of? It's a good deal. Things going good. How many years? Wow. So it's been ten years since we said, "Damn it, his article." <laughs> ten years. Officially have to start at uh, ten thirty five, so we get another another minute. Yeah. All right, a reminder to everybody to silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Uh, you'll announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. A uh, limit of one follow up when you ask questions, and make sure you raise your hand so Holly can find you. And uh, we'll begin with Montana State head coach Danny Sprinkle opening statement yeah um, obviously unbelievably excited for our program our community uh, Bobcat Nation to be down here representing them uh, in the March Madness the NCAA tournament uh, it's the first time in 26 years uh, it's been too long you know our fans have been through a lot they've been there through thick and thin and so I can't wait to kind of see how many of them show up down here tonight we have a bunch of pep rallies going and and uh, you know but the excitement's off the charts in Bozeman and I know our players are excited and uh, can't wait to walk them on that blue carpet and, and, uh, and get out on that court here in a minute. Go here first. 
Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Uh, coach, given your coaching history and your uh, you know personal connection to, to Southern California, how meaningful is it for you to be back here? Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, it's almost like God sent us here. Like, it really is. It's, you know, as soon as San Diego was on the bracket, I, I had a feeling we were coming here. Uh, I got a ton of family, uh, friends coming down from L.A. for the game. Uh, and a lot of them I wasn't able to get tickets for. If they bought them, they're still coming down to support. And it, it's awesome because, obviously, I spent 20 years here as an assistant coach down here in Southern California. And, you know, this is kind of where I built my network, you know, and, and really, you know, learned everything from Coach Braswell and Coach Taylor. And, uh, you know, it's just it's awesome to be back in Southern California. Alex Eshelman with ABC Fox Montana. Coach, 26 years ago when Montana State was playing in the NCAA tournament, you were a player. What is it like to be back here with the Bobcats this time as a coach? It's awesome. I mean, it's almost better. You know, it's just to see the excitement on our players' faces and to see some of our, our fans that were literally in tears in Boise. Like, that's how excited they were for this moment and how long they've been waiting for it. And it's, it's an unbelievable experience. You know, this and the Super Bowl are the two biggest events in the world. You know, like literally the biggest sporting events in the world and Montana State University is part of that. And it's going to be an unbelievable experience that these players that, and the fans, they'll remember the rest of their lives. Ashley Washburn with MTN Sports. Uh, speaking of that 96 team, you've got a couple players in town that are coming to watch you. Coach, have you yeah. talked to them? Have they come talk to the team? Uh, what's kind of that been? Yeah, they, a lot of them are flying in today. You know, they will probably talk to the team, but I know, you know, hopefully they make it to the hotel. But they're, uh, they're all excited. You know, not just that, the, you know, the, the 87 team too. You know, they're coming, you know, that championship team, the first NCAA team. And so it's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. You know, like I said, Bobcat Nation's been waiting a long time for this. And those players, you know, that's who we do it for. You know, the players that came from before us and, uh, you know, couldn't be more proud that they're, they're, they're spending their money to come and support us. Uh, John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Uh, as long as we're doing the walk down memory lane, what do you recall about playing against Donovan McNabb 26 years ago? And what did you learn as a player that you think can help your team prepare for this weekend? Yeah, I don't even remember if Donovan McNabb got in the bench or uh, get off, got off the bench, but he was in the game. But what I do remember is how big Syracuse was, and that zone that Coach Bayam has is gigantic. I remember that. I remember being down by one at halftime, and we were feeling pretty good about ourselves, and came out and got smacked by 30 in the second half. But you know, I think the one thing I want to get across to our guys is, you know, it's a no regret game. You know, like I don't want to, at the end of the game, say, man, I wish we'd have showed up the first five minutes of the game, like man, we actually competed with those guys, but we didn't come out the way we were supposed to. You know, I want to come out and be aggressive, and we got to compete, you know, and let the chips fall where they may at the end. But, you know, for that 40 minutes, we don't have to be better than Texas Tech for the season. We just have to be better for 40 minutes. And tomorrow at 1045, that's, that 40 minutes is all that matters. And we just got to knock down some shots and, and play with confidence like we have all year. Hey, Coach. Brady King, Fox 34 in KCBD in Lubbock, Texas. From what you've seen from Texas Tech as a whole this season, what makes them such a tough opponent? Their toughness. You know, they, uh, I had a coach in the Big 12 tell me they're as real as real gets. And you can see it when you watch film. You've obviously seen them play this year. Defensively, they're tremendous. But that's what Coach Adams has done since he was at Howard Junior College. and That's what his teams do. You know, they play with an, an, an enormous amount of grit and toughness. And we're going to have to be able to match that tomorrow. And we got to be able to score the ball. We're going to have to make some tough shots, which teams are, you know, teams that have beat them, that's what you have to do. It's not going to be easy, but you have to make tough shots and you got to compete and take care of the basketball and, and do the discipline things that it takes to win games at this time of the year. Hey, Coach Pete Christie from KCBD in Lubbock. Just wanted to see if you've come across Coach Adams and what your relationship is with him. Yeah, I mean, he, he doesn't know who I am. I've obviously known him for a long time. Um, I recruited a couple of his players at Howard Junior College. And in fact, one of them, I think the last, I think his name was Desmond Harris. He went to, he ended up going to Weber State in like 2007. And uh, so I got to have a word with Coach Adams about that too, because he was a pretty good player. But we recruited, you know, his players a lot. And obviously he had thousands of coaches come in. Like I said, he's not going to have any idea who Danny Sprinkle is. But I've known him and respected him just because I know his background and his pedigree and everything that he's earning this year has been because of the work that he's put in at the junior college level, everywhere. And he's just, you know, knowing him, I know one of their guys on staff, Barrett Peary, uh, one of his assistant coaches, was the head coach in our league at Portland State the last couple of years. And so, you know, I talked to him quite a bit throughout the year. And, 
you know, obviously a tremendous coach that's, you know, getting rewarded. Brent Scrotenborg, USA Today. I wondered how important recruiting international players is for your program, and particularly Canada. Yeah, it's huge. You know, we have uh, Kellen Tynes and Abdul Muhammad, both from Canada right now. Um, you know, we've, we've really hit England hard. You know, I mean, three of our better players, you know, Jabril Bello, Amin Adamu, and Great Osabar, our freshman, they're all from England. We have another, Borja Fernandez from Spain. And it's huge because, I mean, Bozeman's a place where they can come. You know, you got to be you got to be on task academically at Montana State. You know, we can't just get anybody into school. And those kids come over, they're grateful for the opportunity. They love Bozeman. Academically, they're great. And it's somewhere we feel like we can get a player that may be above our level, um, that in order to come to the NCAA tournament to win our league, you have to be able to get Mountain West level players, you know, low Pac-12 level players. And we feel like that we've done a pretty good job of that, you know, in the international market. Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Danny, what have you liked or seen out of your team in the last week or so, you know, in terms of going from such a celebratory mood uh, on Saturday to kind of getting back to business this week? Yeah, you know, we've had a next – I mean, our motto this year was take the next step, you know, and we've done that every day. Just take the next step. Just worry about today, then we'll take the next step tomorrow. And to continue to get better every day. And playing seven games in 13 days with – our whole team was injured. You know, Xavier, Jabril, and Raekwon, like they didn't practice for five, seven days, you know, leading up to the Sacramento State, the first game of the tournament, and they just came and played. And it shows the depth of our team and how important, they, that, like, they care for each other. You know, like, there's no way, even though Jabril was about 50%, there's no way he was not playing in that Big Sky tournament. And so, you know, you see the grit and, and the toughness mentally, you know, probably more than physically, uh, that I was really impressed with our team. Carlos Silva from the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Coach, you mentioned Barrett Perry. Everyone talks about the defense for Texas Tech, but in terms of what they've done on offense, can you speak to what Barrett's been able to utilize and kind of uh, figure out with Texas Tech and making them more up-tempo than they've been in previous years? Yeah, you know, and a lot of it feeds off their defense. You know, they're so hard to score on. You know, they're never taking the ball out of the net. And so they're transitioning. And you see they have tremendous athletes. You know, they're all 6'5 and above, and they can all get the basketball to the rim. And, you know, when they start making threes, they're they, – they could win, you know, they're super dangerous. And so it, uh, you know, but it all, it all comes from their defense. You know, it all comes from their pressure, their aggressiveness. Bryson Williams is, you know, I knew, I remember watching him when he was a freshman in high school. You know, he's obviously from Fresno and we recruited a couple players off his AAU team. And even when he went to Fresno State with Coach Terry and then to UTEP, like he's always been an all league player, you know? And so he's, he's kind of their guy offensively, you know, Terrence Shannon, super dangerous, O'Banner, like they, they, he does a, as good a job in the country as recruiting to his philosophy and his mentality. You know, you have to have a certain mindset to play at Texas Tech. You can't be a pretty boy, you know, All-American if you're going to play at Texas Tech. And, you know, and that's why he wins. Another kind of fun fact, too, like when I was a freshman, we actually played Texas Tech. The year we went to the NCAA tournament, we played Texas Tech down in Lubbock, uh, and they had – Tony Batte, Sasser, Corey, they were low. I think they went like 30 and two and beat Duke in the Sweet 16 uh, that year. But I, I remember that game very specifically because I was a true freshman and that was kind of my eye opening a moment to, to high major basketball. Alex Eshelman, ABC Fox Montana, spoke with your parents today, Coach Sprinkle, and one of your former players came up, gave them a big hug, and your mom said that that team is family, that 96 team was family, this team's family. Yep. How have your parents influenced that? family mindset with with you and your program yeah I mean I wouldn't be here without them like they're they're my backbone they're the biggest supporters you know you've seen them at every game I mean no matter if there's 12,000 people in that arena tomorrow you'll be able to hear my mom I guarantee that and uh you know they it's just family you know and all my players my mom's their mom you know she still makes them caramels you know Xavier Bishop like that's just what she does like for road trips, she's packing them stuff. You know, she's just that team mom still, you know, and she'll never change because that's how important, you know, that family atmosphere is to her. Parker Cotton from Bozeman Daily Chronicle again. Denny, what sort of conversations have you had with Trisha this week in terms of both being on the stage together, getting to represent the Big Sky and Montana State uh, on the same day, no less? Yeah, I mean, our women's program is awesome. The staff, the players, 
Uh, we haven't had a chance to talk much this week. Uh, just we've both been so busy with everything. But you know, we did see each other in the offices and gave each other a big hug. And you know, super proud of them. And uh, you know, just you see the work that they put in, and you you know, it's no surprise how successful she's been and their girls have been because that's just what they do. Ashley Washburn, Montana Sports. Uh, despite the team kind of being banged up last week, how are they sitting now, especially Jabril Bello? Yeah, he's better. He's better this week. He still hasn't practiced this week, but he'll he'll be ready to go. He'll be ready to go tomorrow, and and I imagine he'll be a little healthier than he was last week. Any other questions for Coach Sprinkle? Thank you. <laughs> One other quick thing that I hope my players don't remember: about six weeks ago, I wasn't very happy with our defense. I thought we were getting pretty selfish. And so I clipped up about 25 clips of Texas Tech's defense. And I showed it to my players. And I was like, this is how hard I want you to play. This is what we have to look like defensively. But I hope they don't remember that, because we got a score on them at 1045 tomorrow. Thank you, Coach. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. All right, a recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub, ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you. Uh, next one starts at 11.05.
Gentlemen, just sit by your name. All right, we've got the TCU Horned Frogs, number nine seed in the South. Uh, a couple of rules and regulations. Silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Limit of one follow-up, raise your hand to get the floor. And the student athletes for TCU, Emmanuel Miller, Mike Miles Jr., Chuck O'Bannon Jr., and Damian Baugh. It goes right to the media for questions. Raise your hand and Polly will find you. Uh, Jeff Wilson with Frogs today. Fellas, you're, you're here. What, what's it been like the last, I don't know, 18 hours of getting here and getting settled in? Anybody specifically or? Anybody. Okay. Chuck. Uh, you know, it's exciting to be here. Uh, we're still trying to take it in. Uh, we have some juniors, some seniors on the team, but in a sense, we're all freshmen because this is our first time. So we're all just trying to take it in, but at the same time, staying disciplined to the fact that we're here to win. Uh, we're here to compete. Uh, we're here to go far, far in this tournament, and we have to take it one game at a time. So this senior hall game coming up tomorrow uh, is what we've been focusing on for the past two days, uh, past three days, actually, just preparing ourselves mentally, physically, uh, so that we're capable to get this W. Hey, Charles, uh, Nick James, KUSI here in San Diego. Just a quick question for you about your tie to the tournament with your, your dad, your uncle, and all that. How cool is it to be a part of that tradition to get up and down and run the floor just like your, your relatives? Right. Uh, you know, growing up, I always, <clears throat> always looked up to them, you know, so being in this position is just a blessing, you know, nothing more. Uh, John Titel from HoopsHD.com. For Emmanuel and Mike, I believe both of you have won gold medals before. So as you know what it takes to win it all, what does it take to win it all? Uh, it's hard. It's not easy to win. It's the biggest prize everybody going for. Uh, you just got to stay together throughout everything. Everything ain't going to go your way in every game. So you just got to stay focused on the main goal, and that's what we're looking to do. Uh, yeah, to add on to what Mike said, it's definitely not hard. Uh, we're going to be going, going up against the best players in the country, uh, the best coaches in the country. Uh, to win this thing, it's going to take a complete team effort, and we know that we're brothers and we got each other's back to do so. Mike, Drew Davidson for Star Telegram. What's your take on Seton Hall after studying for a few <coughs> days? And, you know, it looks like they're a physical team. I mean, mm -hmm. are you expecting a pretty physical matchup? much like you guys had in a uh, Big 12 play? Uh, yeah, we're expecting, you know, we, we know they want to win just as much as we do. You know, they're big, they're strong. Everyone in their style lineup is 6'6 six, six or uh, taller. So we know it's not going to be easy. They're a good team, but um, it's nothing we haven't seen before in the conference we're coming from. So we're going to be ready. Uh, for Dame, Colin Post, TCU 360. Seton Hall kind of thrives off of points, off of turnovers. How important is it for you guys who have kind of struggled with turnovers sometimes this year to take care of the ball, especially in transition? Uh, we don't really think of, uh, of that. I mean, we're just going to go out and play our game. and Everything can take care of itself. Any other questions for the student athletes? Mike, you guys got some some name and affiliation again. Oh, again. All right, Jeff Wilson, Frogs today. Mike, uh, you guys got some some rest. You guys had some guys who needed to heal up. How how are you guys feeling as you get ready for the, for this? Uh, I wouldn't say one hundred percent, but you know those couple of days did give us a, some time to get ready for this uh, for our hardest game of the season, the most important game of the season is coming up. So. Uh, I wouldn't say everybody 100%. We all still got nagging injuries, something that bothers, something that's bothering us. But you know, there's no excuse. We still gonna go out and play. Like we don't have any injuries because we know how important this is to our team. My ankle good. Brian Esrich, TCU Sports Network. Guys, all four of you like to get to the rim, but you haven't seen necessarily a rim protector like uh, Obiagu for for them. Do you do you change your game? Do you have to do anything differently? 
with a seven foot two guy sitting there in the middle of the lane? And Emmanuel, start with you, and maybe all of you kind of talk. Uh, about. you know, uh, good question. Uh, yeah, we're going up against a seven footer, but I think the mentality for each and every single player is to still be aggressive. Uh, no matter who's in the paint, uh, we have to have the mentality that we're going to get a bucket. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's taller. We got to play, a, do a better job playing off two feet, uh, finding open guys. But I think we're all going to be pretty aggressive. Uh, like E Man said, it's obviously going to be a challenge, but. Uh, that's not going to change the way we play. Uh, we're all very capable of getting to the rim and finishing. So, it's you know, for me, I'm just going there like I always do. Uh, obviously, I don't want to get my shot blocked, but, you know, I'm a challenger, you know, and just play my game. I don't have to change anything. Uh, yeah, it's going to be very important, you know, just to play off of two feet, you know, pump fake, <laughs> get him off his feet, you know, play around him. So that's what we need to focus on. Same thing they said. <laughs> Um, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. Um, Emmanuel, um, obviously the NCAA tournament, you know, has lofty, you know, dreams and aspirations for yeah. players. I'm just curious how how it's felt the last couple of days, knowing that this is going to be Man. an NCAA tournament appearance for you. It's it's like a dream come true. Uh, but this is only the first step, part of my dream. My dream is to win it all, and I think playing Senior Hall first is part the first step. But being with my team on Selection Sunday, uh, having that feeling that, damn, like, we really made this. Like, we're really going to be in the tournament playing against the best players. Uh, it's, been, it's been a dream. It's been, it's been thrilling, uh, to say the least, just because we know how hard we work from since the summer. Uh, we know what we're capable of doing. And to finally be able to show, showcase it on the biggest stage in NCAA basketball with millions of people watching from back home, uh, it's a great feeling, man. It's a great feeling. Uh, Colin Post, TC360. Mike, you guys look pretty locked in right now. Just talk about the way that intensity has kind of grown for you guys over these last few days as you've been getting ready for this game. Uh, Yeah, we, we are locked in right now. You know, the coaches has been on us, you know, the past couple of days in practice. So we don't have no choice but to be locked in. Uh, like I said, this is the biggest game of, my, of our life coming up. And uh, we got to take it as serious as, as anything. And that's what we're doing. You know, we're practicing hard. We're scouting them hard. You know, we want to go win the whole thing. But we can't do that without beating C and Hall. And just a quick follow up, Mike, as well. Just how do your wrists feel right now? Do you feel like they've kind of progressed since <coughs> you re-entered them back in January? Uh, the left one is good. The right one still, you know, still giving me some problems, still hurt. But, you know, I've been playing through it for about two months now. So it's not going to change anything. Any other questions for the student athletes? OK, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Good luck. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, a recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub, ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you. Coach Dixon will be here at 1120. Well done, Polly. You're already in.
All right, good. How you doing? Good. How are you? They want me to wait at least a couple minutes, but if you're eager, I will fudge it a little bit. All right, we will get going. A uh, reminder to everyone, silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Limit of one follow-up. Raise your hand to get the attention of us. And Coach Jamie Dixon will open with an opening statement. Uh, well, obviously excited to be here. I think, uh, um, I think this is the spot we wanted to go to, uh, San Diego, because of our uh, connection and so many students that we have from California, especially so Southern California and San Diego specifically. So we're excited to be here. Uh, we'll have a big contingent. Uh, we've got some alumni events set up already, so uh, we're looking forward to it. Obviously playing a great team in Seton Hall, a program I'm obviously familiar with, played against, uh, coached against a number of games uh, over my career, and so uh, know the program, know Kevin very well uh, too, good, uh, good friends, uh, go way back. And uh, uh, just uh, excited about what he's done uh, at Seton Hall. I remember when he got the job there, and so uh, uh, coming from Iona. So uh, we are uh, uh, go way back and um, that. But as far as uh, our team, uh, excited uh, for him. We've got a, obviously a young group. We're not as old as, uh, as Seton Hall is with all their uh, grad transfers, but uh, we have a uh, group that has a lot of energy. It's gotten better as the years uh, gone on, and and, and really. Uh, um, has uh, uh, improved in, in offensively, I think, uh, mostly, uh, and, and defensively. You know, we, we've uh, uh, we've uh, ranked high in, in some categories, but obviously, rebounding is our thing, and and what we do well, and what we have to do well tomorrow. So, looking forward again to the to the opportunity to play here in front of a lot of fans. Colin Post, TCU 360 coach. I uh, I asked Dame this, but Seton Hall really thrives off of getting points off their opponents' turnovers, and you've talked all year about trying to get y'all's turnovers down. Does it feel like it kind of needs to culminate for y'all to win this game? Well, here? we've been lower, Colin, as you know, in the last uh, five games. Our numbers have dropped. They're pretty good, uh, a pretty good number. So, you know, it's something, again, as I talked about, our offense being better, we're better. Uh, because of that, uh, we a young group, obviously, a, new, a lot of new players, especially on the perimeter. So um, uh, we've uh, improved at it, and we'll continue. But I think everybody would say the same thing. We're, we're, we come from a league where they force a lot of turnovers. The numbers are high. We're, our league is, in our league, we probably have, we're, I think, second or, 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 uh, or next to last or last as far as uh, most turnovers in a league. So it's just a league that forces a lot of turnovers, plays that way. But seeing all is, is someone that does play that. It's a very physical defensive team, older. That's all we faced all year long in our conference. So um, we're younger, but uh, um, I, I think improved. Drew Davison, for Star Telegram. Jamie, you talked mm -hmm. that your team's gotten better as the season's gone on. What, what do you think of practice this week? And how do you feel they are going into this game? Yeah, you know, we kind of uh, thought we might be out here in San Diego, looked at the dates. So we went Sunday before the uh, election, selection show, and then we went uh, uh, Monday. We took Tuesday off. Uh, I just didn't want to go five straight days over my years' ex experience uh, being in the tournament. So that was uh, that's where we did, and I think it worked well for us. Uh, we had a good practice today. You know, we went short this morning. Uh, live stuff. We'll get some shooting up here now. But, um, you know, we really tried to, in some ways, uh, simulate uh, uh, the aggressiveness, the physicality that we're expecting from Seton Hall by how we're playing. And we've turned that on and off uh, uh, a year. And I think that's some of our youth coming into play. But um, uh, certainly, uh, this is a group that uh, uh, is excited to be here. It's an, you know, a, a lively group, a lot of energy. Uh, and uh, I think they're excited to be here. And we, you know, we have obviously a lot of guys that are first time, uh, uh, pretty much everybody's first time being, because uh, we have so many new players, uh, 
uh, first time being in the tournament. So, uh, you know, we only had two returning players last this year. So, um, you know, that's the situation they're in. But they're, they're, they've handled it well. And like I said, today was good. Yesterday was good before we left as far as aggressiveness. Simulating uh, uh, added some sets. I think that's something that I, 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 I can mention too as well. Some OBs and, and some uh, and things. And then we talked about some adjustments defensively. Dana O'Neill at the Athletic. Jamie, hey, Dana. Hi. Uh, you talked about you know your familiarity with Seton Hall and Kevin. It's been a bit, um, but when you're doing like a fast turnover like this, does that help you at all prepare with this team? Uh, yeah, it was a dig at my age, I guess, Dana. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It was. Uh, so as far as what Seton Hall. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the game's changed. Uh, it, it, the game's changed in two years. I'd say the game's changed in ten years. I mean, we're in a, we're in a whole different I environment. They've got transfers. I look at their grad transfers from eight different schools, I think. And, you know, it's just uh, some people does, will still seem a little surprised that there's the, the number of transfers that somebody has. But, I mean, everybody has it. And uh, we went through the teams in the tournament, and it's just amazing how many how many teams, how many transfers are, and how old the teams are. That's even more remarkable. And then I look at our team, and we're so young uh, at the same time. So, you know, there's different challenges with who can get grad students in, who can get jun you know transfers with, how many units they can come in. So there's all these different challenges, but uh, they they've stayed old. Um, and, and obviously, uh, as the game, that's changed the, how the game is played, too. I mean, it's, it seems like there was a, a push to, to more scoring. And now it's become, you know, don't call any fouls and, and uh, don't call travels. Uh, but um, uh, it, it is, it is a defensive uh, first in, in the Big East after watching some of their games in a lot of ways. And, and certainly, our conference has become that as well. Coach Dixon, Brian Estridge, TCU Sports Network. Good to see you. Good to see the, you. Uh, uh, have you faced a rim protector this year like Obiagu? Uh, do you go back to Georgetown or LSU? Has there been one? Yeah. How does it change the game? No, I think I think probably he's he's probably the best one at it. I mean, he's solely that's that's his job. And uh, um, but I recruited him six years ago. I think when I was at Pitt, so I, I, I knew him well. I, that's the thing that when you say familiarity, Dana, Dana is like uh, you know Aiken. I remember recruiting him. Uh, Obiaco, we were, went down to uh, Atlanta to recruit him. So there's a, there's a familiarity with a, a lot of their guys uh, on that. So yeah, we I did a home visit with uh, Obiaco. Uh, I it wouldn't have been a home visit; it was on campus. But uh, um, uh, I remember uh, saying hello to him. But um, uh, yeah, just uh, he's different. There's no question about it. Um, uh, they they kind of split time with with uh, um, Samuel and and and. Uh, uh, they'll, they'll throw uh, uh, the lefty from South Florida in there that we recruited too. There's another guy we recruited back in the day. So, um, uh, but that was when I were at TCU. But uh, again, yeah, he's he's different. There's no question. But he was different six years ago when I saw him in high school too. In that regard, uh, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. You mentioned the lack of experience that you have with a young team in the in NCAA tournament specifically. And I feel like from the outside, it's one of those things where I can feel comfortable about them, but I don't really know until. You know how they're going to handle it until the tip-off actually comes. What do you need to see once tip-off comes to kind of really solidify that? Well, they're, they're, they're not going to be uh, they're not going to be scared or lack confident. I know that that much. I'm very sure. If, again, we just played Kansas three times in a row. We just uh, in, in a week uh, we've played the other another number one seed in our league. Is just uh, as I told our guys. I mean, you know what we've seen in our league. No one's no one's done what we've done. We had you know seven games in I don't know what it is, 15 days or something it was, and and. All, almost all of them were ranked, and three of them were number one teams. So, uh, um, so we, we've we've seen we've seen what you what you, the best you can throw at you, and, and uh, you know we just got to handle as I say the biggest thing is we got to handle some some mistakes, handle some setbacks. You know our turnovers we've got to still guard. We miss a shot, we've got to guard, get back. Um, you know those are things that I think we've had to uh, address throughout the year uh, and, and ha handling some adversity. So there'll be an adversity in this game, and as there is in every game, especially when you're playing this level. And so we've got to handle that, I think, a little better. Continue to handle better. Uh, Jeff Wilson with Frogs today. Yeah, that's right. Two Two questions. Does Seton Hall remind you of anyone specifically yeah. in, in the Big 12? We've said Texas Tech, uh, speaking of their, how old they are and their physicality 
and uh, they do things slightly different defensively. They don't have the sole rim protector like that that, that uh, Brian mentioned, but um, you know that's that's the thing that really says. But that's that's the kind of the team, the the, the pure age uh, of the team um, and uh, physicality too. Um, uh, they they run probably more sets offensively, uh, but it becomes a lot of mid post. We talked about that as a similarity, uh, posting up guards, other guys just not their big guy. And, and, and Texas similar like that too, really their best shooters are uh, their bigs. And uh, so they play through the post through their guards, similar to uh, Tech in a little way. Then my second question, you, you said they're excited to be here, but do you have to guard against they're just happy to be here? Do you have to, there, it seems like there might be a lot um, of You know, I, 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 I don't think so. We just lost our, our last game. I mean, uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, we're, we're here. We're, uh, uh, we thought we were going to have a, uh, you know, a higher seed, uh, like everybody in the in the tournament, I'm sure. Uh, but um, no, I, I think I think we're uh, uh, we're here to to uh, uh, to advance and, and, and ha take that as a, as a challenge. We know we're playing a good team. We're playing a. Uh, I think maybe um, you know some some signs. It's a little different if you're playing a power conference team. Maybe how a teams look at it and, and a non-power conference team. But certainly we're playing a conference. Uh, power conference team that uh, um, everybody knows the history of Seton Hall and, and how good they've been over. I just met with, uh, I just talked with uh, PJ Carlissimo. So um, I guess my players don't remember the uh, NCAA, the, the, final, the championship game, but I, I certainly do. Uh, John Titel from hoopshd.com. Uh, you and your point guard have been on a great journey over the past yeah. nine months, including a gold medal. Um, what has it been like and how close are you two? Yeah, I, I mean, um, it, it's fun to see Mike grow. He's become more, uh, more of a leader, I think, more outspoken, more talkative. Um, he was very quiet initially recruiting him. Uh, but yeah, as you said, and, and, uh, you know, I mean, that was the sole, you know, they asked me to do USA basketball and that was really the, you know, the, the sole reason I, I, I shouldn't say that that was not so, but a big reason why we were doing the USA basketball is to, to be, have an opportunity to be with Mike in, in the summer and watch him grow, watch him get better. And he's a better player now because of that experience. So I thought it was great for TCU to have a goal. We never had a guy do that coach in that obviously. So to be, uh, and, and the, and the level of play was so good and, and the, the great players we had, but also the great players that, um, the other teams had Canada, France, uh, the French team was unbelievable. I mean, they uh, no one knows their guys because they're all pros, but they'll all be in the in the, in the, in you know high draft picks uh, uh, coming coming in here very shortly. So uh, I think yeah, there's uh, see that improvement, and I think what enabled us like Mike, you, you have to be the leader because you're the only guy that's played for me. You're the point guard. You know you've got to lead, and I and I we saw it coming that 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 summer. You know you, he was in a position where. Uh, it, I think it, it better positioned him to lead, and and we needed his leadership as a sophomore, you know, because like I said, they have six, seven, you know, grad transfers on, on Seton Hall. We, we we don't have that. We don't have any. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is kind of random, but I want to ask you about one of your former Big East brethren, Mike Bray. Uh, is there anybody in your profession who is quite as loose? as he is, and, and does that sometimes, I don't know, discredit what he is able to do as a coach? Um, gosh, I, I, I hope not. Um, you know, he's a, he's a friend. I mean, he's one of my closest uh, uh, friends. Um, you know, um, uh, you know it, was, it was interesting watching that game last night, and, you know, I know Pykele real well. And, but I really, I know Mike, Mike, Mike and I spent the whole uh, two years last and there's really COVID because of the NABC and our situation. So we kind of were involved in, you know, the, the, the transition. So we, we were on the phone too much this, this uh, COVID time. Uh, he was at the beach in Florida. I was in, in Texas, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's just a good, a great man who's, who's won a lot of games and uh, you know, no one can say a bad word about Mike Bray in, in our business. And uh uh, he is. He, he he laughs. He has fun. He he goes to the beach. He he enjoys himself, uh, as you were alluding to. And and uh, but he's a good man. And uh, 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 most often, like I said, there's he's certainly is no. You never hear about any scandal with him. 
uh, Jamie, big picture yes, here. I'm just wondering, after COVID... Can you go name and affiliation again? I apologize. Call and post, TCU360. Um, just after COVID and, and Big 12 tournament last year, no fans and hardly any fans at the tournament last year, just for your team and, and basketball mm. as a whole to be able to experience this event with full capacity, just what do you think that means? It's different. Sport? I mean, it, it, we had two years, really, of it wasn't the same thing. You weren't practicing. I mean, you weren't... You weren't uh, you weren't with your players. You weren't. I mean, again, we were probably hit more than I, I don't know. Anybody had five shutdowns or what we did. I mean, you know, where we had and all the guys we had out. We had a guy that was held out uh, of playing because of COVID, which I don't know. There weren't many of those. And um, so no one was hit probably more than us. And again, our, our campus, the way it is, it's so close knit. It's open. It's it's we don't have online courses. All of a sudden, all our guys are in online courses. I mean, like. You know, that's, I don't know any schools. Are, there's very few that don't have online courses, and and uh, there's very few at our level, and and so it was just a completely different world in in so many ways. And then five shutdowns, and you know, and, uh, Eddie put on uh, 20 pounds in in, in COVID uh, on each shutdown. So uh, as we've have, as has been uh, talked about often and written about and uh, documented. So yeah, this is uh, to me. I think college basketball is back. And I think for a, for a variety of reasons, you're going to see just a different atmosphere, a different level of play, and uh, uh, in this tournament. And I think you saw it this year too. I think it's because uh, um, there's nothing like college basketball, uh, you know. And, and and we were hurt more because of the indoor situation than than other sports, as we know. We had more, uh, uh, you know, regulations or uh, restrictions. I guess a better word and uh, and challenges. So. Uh, yeah, I think I think we're 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 going to see basketball at its best now. Any other questions for Coach Dixon? Uh, Brian Eskridge, TCU Sports Network. Coach, you uh, you won your first round game as a player in '87, right? <laughs> yeah. And you lose the second round game to Notre Dame by one point, right? Yeah. Does that one still bother you? Yeah. Like, do, do games still bother you? Does that one still bother you? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it was. Uh, 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 probably every loss bothers you, but I think your your last college game probably bothers you a little bit more. But yeah, that's uh, you know, I mean, I don't know why you brought it up, Brian, but uh, you know that's who you are. Uh, but uh, um, but yeah, no, it does. And um, you know, and then obviously seeing you know the, the, the obviously we've gotten back to postseason and NIT winning championship, but um, you know we we our history is is not great, but we're, we we're changing that and and. Uh, but uh, I guess it gets referred to more because we hadn't been, we hadn't won uh, uh, many games in the NCAA tournament. So that's uh, that's something. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's uh, you know as a coach, it probably more. But I was a as a player, I was probably a coach in in in, in the making. So it, it sticks a little longer. Yeah, no question. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Any other questions for coach? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good luck. <laughs> All right, a recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you. Good luck, Coach.
Gentlemen, just sit by your placard. Thank you. All right, we have the Texas Tech student athletes, number three seed in the West. Uh, a couple of reminders silence your cell phones, flash photography is prohibited, announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Uh, one follow up raise your hand to get the attention of Polly. And we'll begin, uh, we have Bryson Williams, Kevin McCuller, and Kevin O'Banner. Uh, please raise your hand, and if you can, tell us who the question is for. Uh, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. Kevin, obviously last year you were on the other side of an NCAA tournament upset, you know, being the team that was an underdog and, and obviously going on a run. I guess, how is it this? How is it different this time around? And maybe what lessons can you impart from that experience being on the other side uh, uh, last year? I mean, it's a blessing, of course, just to be, you know, in March Madness once again. And uh, I know for sure a lesson is that anybody can be beat. So as we're facing this team, you know, tomorrow, just to have the mindset just to win and uh, just don't take your competitor, competitor lightly and just to come out victorious. So that's the kind of the mindset that we have in the team. Jared Johnson inside the Red Raiders 24-7 Sports. Hey, Kevin, I remember back in uh, 2019 that run that uh, you were you red shirt and you, you traveled with the team and all that and talking in the locker room. Is there anything that you learned from that whole run and that experience that you know, used last year and then you could use uh, in this tournament? Uh, yeah, it was valuable, um, you know, coming to college early and being with those guys. And um, on the Final Four run, I really just witnessed how, you know, like the older guys just took it so seriously, and but they also enjoyed the ride and I uh, had fun along the way. Um, you know, this is a blessing at the level that we're at right now to be in this tournament. So, uh, you know, we just want to have fun and go out there and win, so. Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Bryson, my question is for you. Um, in preparation for this game, Montana State's coaches and players have said that in, in watching Texas Tech, you know, your physicality and your depth really stands out. On the other side of that, what sort of things have stood out to you about Montana State as you all have prepped for this game? Uh, watching Montana State, I mean, they're a very versatile team. Um, they got a very, uh, um, they got a good post presence, and uh, their guards are they really are really good at penetrating to the paint, and um, and uh, they they know how to find their shots. And uh, we, I mean, us at Tech Tech, I mean, we know how important defense is and uh, how important being physical and being the hardest playing team is. And I mean, every team in this tournament is good, and we gotta that's that's our chip, and that's what we gotta uh, rely on in these games. For Kevin McCuller, Brady King here with Fox 34 and KSBD in Lubbock. What's been the message from Coach Adams going into this postseason? Has it changed the same? Has it been the same as the whole season, or has anything changed from him? Uh, really, it's been the same the whole season. Um, you know, day by day, we're still getting better every day. Um, you know, practicing and things like that. But it's really just been—he's been preaching just being the hardest playing team every night. And um, when we do that, you know, we give us a chance to win, and, and that's all you can do. So uh, just pretty much being the hardest playing team every night out there. Carlos Silver from the Lubbock Analytics Journal. This is for Bryson. Bryson, in terms of just your first NCAA tournament game and being able to be close to family, how, how have you kind of seen that? And are you going to have a lot of people kind of come into this game? And how important is that to you? Uh, it's very important to me. I mean, definitely. Um, I mean, I'm from Fresno, which is like only like about five, six hours away from here. So my mom and them are able to drive down and come watch the game. I mean, it's a big thing. And then also, be, it be my first uh, NCAA tournament game. I mean, it's just a blessing to be able to be on a team that's a uh, contenders to be able to play for uh, a national t uh, title, and uh, it's it's just a it's just a blessing. 
Hi guys, Alex Eshelman with ABC Fox Montana. This is a little off the topic of basketball, but do you have you guys ever been to Montana and do you guys know anything about the state? I have no clue about Montana and I've never been there. <laughs> I, I've never been there either. Yeah, no clue. <laughs> no clue. Pete Christie from KCBD in Lubbock. Uh, really a question for all you guys is just, you know, uh, Coach Adams has preached togetherness and all you guys or, you know, Kevin, you've been here, but you other guys came in and you're all from other programs. Talk about the togetherness of this team meshing together and making this run now in the tourney. Start on the far end this time. Uh, I mean, it's, just, it's all about just embracing the moment. You know, it's a, it's a familyhood at the end of the day. I know how far we go will determine, you know, especially the bond that we have, and it just makes us closer and closer. And this is when uh, players make plays, and uh, I think this is a big moment, and just just to keep us closer and just to, you know, really go far. Uh, yeah, I'll just say the relationship we have with each other on and off the court. Uh, we do everything together, and these are my brothers, so um, I, I know that carries over. So um, you got to have that to make a good run in this tournament. Yeah, I reiterating what they said. I mean, we're all brothers. I mean, it was just from the jump. As soon as we had a bunch of new guys come, and we had guys that were already here, um, and we just jailed automatically, and we just became brothers that fast. So it just makes it that much easier on the court. Hi, Scott Miller, New York Times. Um, question for Kevin McCullough, and if I could have a follow-up. The question for Kevin, um, as a young guy in 2019, after that Final Four, obviously the coaching the change shocked a lot of people. Where you're at now, I'm just wondering, what did you see in the transition, and, and what do you make of Coach Adams' style now, and how different is it? Oh uh, yeah, the Final Four run, I'll never forget it. Um, it was just so like vivid. Like I still see it to this day. Uh, after we lost that game in the national championship, seeing everybody crying and stuff, like just motivated me to want to get back there so bad. And um, with with the coaching chain with Coach Adams, um, he's done a great job, and that's the main reason I stayed to stay with him. And um, you know, when we brought in a bunch of new guys and stuff, we all just gelled so easily. And um, you know, we've been having a great run. We've been doing better than a lot of people thought we would even do with the whole coaching change and stuff like that. But we're not settled for that. And uh, you know, we're just trying to make history. So. And then thank you. And then the follow up, if I could ask all three of you, maybe Bryson, and then go down. Just you guys, the incredible defense you play, the energy. If you could each just describe how much effort is put into defense at practice every day compared to other things and what do you make of it is it similar at all to any defense you've ever played uh this is definitely the most different defense i've uh, ever played um i mean um, we, that's a big emphasis on our practice every day is defense uh, and that was a big reason why i even came to texas tech was to become a better defender and everybody knows texas tech for their defense and the and, the, and how hard they play on that end of the floor so that's a big emphasis we put on that in practice uh, yeah, since I've been at Texas Tech uh, coming out of high school, I knew I was going to have to play defense here, and that's one thing I love to do growing up. So um, that was the main reason I came to Texas Tech. And Coach Adams, he's going to make sure we're playing defense for sure. You know, just to reiterate what they said, you know, defense just wins champions, uh, championships, and uh, just to have that as a foundation is a blessing. And, you know, it's a big, it's a big thing that we focus on and practice every day. Brady King, Fox 34 in Lubbock. Um, for Bryson, you guys obviously are known for your defense. Montana State, a little bit known for their three-point shooting. From from your opinion, what what's going to be the keys to victory tomorrow? Um, really, like just what you said. I mean, who who's who's is better? The de who's deep is our defense better? Or is their offense better? I mean, they are a very uh, talented offensive team. They do a lot of great things on that side of the floor as well. I mean, we do a lot of thing uh, great things on on the defense side of the floor. So, I mean, it's just going to be who imposes their will the most, especially in March. Anything else for the student athletes? Go ahead. Yep. John Titel from HoopsHD.com for Kevin McCuller. Uh, you missed eight games this year, so how was your health, and what did you do for the Big 21 on Tuesday? Um, yeah, um, my health is great now. Uh, my ankle is healed up all the way, and I'm feeling good. Um, thanks to uh, Mike Neal, our trainer, and, and they've been helping me get back on my feet and get going. And uh, for my 21st birthday, I've just been really locked in, so I'm just trying to make a run in March. So after I can celebrate after. So. 
uh, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. Bryson, you talked about defense and you know what kind of what entails to do that here at Texas Tech. I'm just kind of curious from a chemistry standpoint on defense, which seems like an essential thing with transfers that come in. I guess how easy was it to gel with this group, or did that take some time, especially before the season? You know, before you guys really gelled defensively with some newcomers and some old faces. Uh, it definitely took some time. Um, I mean, because some some guys were. Uh, I mean, some guys need to improve on defense. I mean, I was one of them. Need to improve on uh, defensively, and then just the defensive scheme that we run. I mean, just to, it took time. It was so different from what we was running at our previous uh, institutions. So um, it took some time. But I mean, once we figured it out, and once we gelled on that, and I mean, it just made it that much easier on the floor, and it and it actually helped us on on the offensive side as well. Anything else for the student athletes? Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate Good it. luck. Appreciate it, John. A recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts provided by ASAP, posted shortly. Thank you. And kudos to anyone wearing green. Nicely done.
Bray. Bray. Let's see what's going on. is prohibited. Make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Limit of one follow-up. Make sure to raise your hand and we'll get started in a minute. All right, we'll begin with uh, an opening statement from Coach Adams. Wow, it hits home when I see my name in, in March Madness. So, uh, but um, just so excited that our team, this has been an unbelievable journey. Uh, if you had the time to, to interview our guys individually, they all have a great story about, um, you know, how they've overcome a lot of adversity to be here. We have a lot of transfers and excited that um, these guys believe in each other and me and then uh, way back in, in uh, April, and, and, and then these guys were recruited up to uh, right around June 1st, and even after that, these guys wanted to be here. They wanted to be in the big dance and wanted to uh, uh, play for uh, a, a coach and a team that had a chance to get there. So I'm, I'll be always, always indebted to our players for their trust in me and, and just so excited that these guys get to experience this. It's just something that you dream as for as a little kid and growing up and and uh, to, to see these guys here and, and what they've accomplished. I'm just so proud to be their coach. Carlos Silva, Love at Gavilat Journal. Mark, you kind of alluded to it, but just when you go back to April and you had four players and you're trying to figure all this stuff out, at, at what point did you kind of feel, okay, here's the vision and this is what we're going to expect and we're going to get to March? Well, it was first of all fortunate to be at a university that um, has some tradition, have, has a great fan base and a supportive administration. That's that's a, a great start. Uh, you know, the problem was it was just Coach Sutton and I in, in an empty in an empty office, and so we had to put that staff together. And and so you know, together, you know, we had the vision. Look, let's let's put together a championship team to go along with this. We knew it'd be a, a championship program. We didn't know it happened this fast, but again, so much of the credit goes back to the guys that we recruited seven transfers, that they believed in each other, that these guys wanted to be coached. We, we did our due diligence and found guys that uh, love basketball and um, were coachable and wanted to be coached hard. And that was a great fit for us. And again, so blessed that I get to experience that. And again, honored and privileged that I get to coach these guys. Hey, Coach Pete Christie, uh, can you give us the attitude of the team? You've got guys who've been in March Madness from other teams, uh, guys who worked yeah. with the team, and just coming together and kind of what's the mentality of this team now as you're less than 24 hours from you playing know, your first Pete, that's game? That's a great question. I, you always are concerned about that. Are they too confident? Are they a little bit too nervous? And you want your guys ready and continue to improve. And, and I talk to these guys today about that. We, you know, we got to trust that you know we we de we deserve to be here. We've earned that right to be here. Like all these teams have and and um but you know again it's excited that uh, we've got you know some guys that haven't been here before like you know uh, uh davion warren and bryson williams and this is their first time to be here and they deserve to be here so proud of those guys but we also have some experience like kevin o'banner who's Lowell roberts he's been here before and he knows what it takes and five guys last year that were here and so we have some experience we have those that aren't uh, don't have experience, have a lot of uh, uh, energy and enthusiasm, which will make up for it. So we have a little, you know, combination of both. But it's it's so important that, that we have the right attitude, stay grounded, trust the process, uh, believe in each other, don't be something we're not. Everybody's got a role, and we've been great accepting that role and just go and play hard. Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Mark, I have two questions for you, if you don't mind. The first is, 
Uh, Danny Sprinkle was in here earlier, and he said that he had recruited some of your players in the past when you were at Howard College. So he joked that he certainly is very familiar with you, but you probably don't know who he is. I'm curious, what is your familiarity with Danny Sprinkle and, and the job that he's doing in Bozeman? Can we just go to the second question? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, uh, Coach, Coach Sprinkle, yeah, he's a great guy and, um, um, and, a, and a heck of a basketball player, too. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of – you know, in familiar territory because we both love our, you know, our schools and our alma mater and, and uh, but yeah, I do remember Coach Sprinkle and a uh, wonderful guy and just have a lot of respect to him as a coach and what he's done with the program there and, and um, so, but nothing but good things about him as a coach and, um, you know, looking forward to coaching against him tomorrow. And secondly, in the lead up to, to this contest, he and his players have mentioned how physical your team is and kind of the depth that you have. Uh, as the things that stand out the most. On the other side of that, what have you watched in your preparation at Montana State and I what stands out to you? Shoot, they're, they're, they're reading our cue cards. We think the same thing about them. I mean, we, 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 um, we think they're very physical. Uh, they've got a lot of uh, depth and strength inside. And um, they're a very disciplined team like we think that we are as well. You know, and they know a lot about winning. Winning 27 games, they, they won 11 in a row one time. I think they won six in a row now. And, and they got a lot of older, experienced players. So they're, you know, we mirror each other in a lot of ways. So, um, and, and I think this is a team that I, I don't, you look at teams with their strengths and weaknesses, and we just don't see many weaknesses on this team. You know, this team that uh, they share the ball. Like I said, they're patient on, on uh, offense, which is going to put a lot of uh, stress on us. We'll have to work a little longer and harder on defense. And then they've got a lot of guys who can shoot the ball. So uh, there'll be a huge challenge for us. John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Uh, Twelve years ago, you won a national championship. So what did you learn about what it takes to win games in March? And if you can win tomorrow, any chance Jay Crowder will drop by Saturday before he plays I on Sunday? I wish. I, yeah, he's on bench to coach. Yeah, it's, yeah when, it, when I won that national championship, you know, I, I felt pretty good about myself coaching. Then I didn't know I had an NBA guy on my team that, in Jay Crowder. I knew he was good, but not that good. But which always goes back. It's always about the players. And – and those guys buying in, buying in the leadership, and, and Jay was a wonderful leader and um, just a, just a great person. I remember in that championship game, he had um, I think he only had he was like two for three or something going into halftime when we were down, and and he didn't say a word. He's such a great team player, and and I'm looking at the stats. Hey guys, why don't we give Jay the ball a little bit more? How about that? And and we did, and, and ended up winning that one. But but Jay was you know that's the type of guy he is, just an unbelievable leader, and we've got some of those on this team that, that are just very unselfish. But, um, and again, it's just such a great experience to cut down the nets. That's, that's uh, you know, in, in that Final Four team a few years back, we were really close. And, and uh, that's a, just a great experience, but there's nothing better than being the champion and being the best in the country. Scott Miller from the New York Times. Um, Mark, your defensive philosophy, the tough switching defense you play, one or two questions first. How long uh, has, have your defensive principles been with you and how much tweaking has there been along the way and is there still today? Yeah, Scott, I, I have uh, always been a defensive coach, at least in my mind anyway. <laughs> so even back uh, junior college, and we've always been really good on, on the defensive end. I, I changed, I've tweaked it. Again, I stole from everybody, Coach Sutton and, and um, you know, and Bob Knight, uh, Dick Bennett, you know, all those guys that looked up. Gerald Myers uh, was, was the first guy that I, really introduced me to man defense. But uh, about three or four years ago, when uh, actually our first year here, uh, I was in charge of our defense at, at Tech. And we finished seventh. And so I went back that summer, started looking and, and trying to study Kansas and, and Baylor. And, and uh, so that's really where this kind of evolved. Even though some other people have done it in the past, that was our real commitment is, you know, we want to try to do a no middle defense. And secondly, with the transfers you just spoke of, what are the challenges of getting transfer players that coming in to buy into the defense and, and how difficult is that? Yeah, it, I think it's difficult for any uh, coach when you bring a transfer in because they've, they've got a certain role and they're the best player on the team, most of them, and, and they're getting the most shots and getting the more, most touches and then you know, you bring them in and say, you know, we, you know, we love you, but we got to, you know, 
we got to, we're going a different way, and we're going to share the ball, and we're going to play defense. And if you want to do those things, you'll get to play a lot of minutes. And and again, fortunately, we had guys with that kind of character that put winning first, not themselves. And and so again, I've been really blessed to have guys that that want to be coached, want to be coached hard, but also want to win. And they know in order to win, we've got to do it the right way and play the right way. Uh, Joseph Hoyt, uh, Dallas Morning News. Mark, uh, kind of on that note too. Bryson talked about how the chemistry on, needed, on defense that's needed was something that built over time. I was wondering if you could take me back to the offseason, though, and specifically how did you really get these guys to, to build chemistry with each other defensively? Yeah, that, that first week with so many new players, the seven transfers coming, I, I jokingly say I wanted to transfer, you know, after that first week because we just, uh, we, you know, just so much to learn and so many different personalities. And, 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 and but, uh, you know, that was a really challenge through the summer. But the guys had great attitude. We were just trying to see what they, act, you know, to look at their strengths and try to accentuate those strengths. And, and uh, but on the defense win, it was, it was always constant. We always bleed on defense. We talked about We drilled it every day. The guys bought in that, you know, and just fortunate that these guys, one of the reasons they came to Texas Tech, they, that we had a, a reputation to play defense. And a lot of the guys want to embrace that, and they want to become a better defensive player. So that part was easy, but but getting all these guys to, uh, you know, just sharing the ball and and uh, understanding the importance of, of the team concept and coming from different programs and getting to change that role completely, uh, so much of the credit goes back to these guys. Again, like I said earlier, just being unselfish. Brady King, Fox 34 in Lubbock. Coach, Coach Sprinkle mentioned the, the toughest part about playing your team is their toughness. What do you have to say about that? And also, what is the toughest part about Montana State from what you've seen so far? Yes, well, you know, uh, that's one of the greatest compliments I think anybody could to give a team. Uh, Coach Sprinkle says your toughness. And I think the same thing about them. Uh, and, and, you know, and every team in this tournament's got some toughness. It may be on the offensive end, uh, it, you know, but there's something about the team that, that that they've overcome adversity, that they've won a tournament championship, uh, that they've uh, that they're here, and you know, there's a lot of different ways to describe toughness: mental toughness, physical toughness, um, and and uh, I'd like to think we have both, and I know they do. You know, we one thing we talk about defense. I always say the the best defense is a patient offense, and and so they play good defense, but their defense is even better because they work you so hard on the offensive end. They're so disciplined. So again, a lot of admiration for them, and think they have a they have a team toughness that I hope we have. Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Uh, when when Danny Sprinkle was in here and his availability was just about to end, he mentioned that he was disappointed with his team's defense about six weeks ago. So he put together a bunch of clips of your team's defense um, to. Just what, what not them. to do or what, you know. <laughs> uh, quite the opposite. So I'm curious, you know, how much is that a compliment and, and kind of a credit to your staff and your players that the defense that you play is a model for other teams? Well, um, yeah, that is that is a, a nice compliment. And, and again, I've, I've done the same thing, you know, when I would show see our team, uh, uh, Coach Sprinkles, uh, their offense, how they share the ball. And so we're always borrowing from each other and learning and, and using different ways to motivate our guys. But yeah, that is a, that's a, a, a nice compliment. And, you know, I'm trying to build up my anger and hate so I'm not like this guy tomorrow, you know, so but, but he's, he's such a good guy. But, uh, you know, we both got to go out and play hard tomorrow. But again, a lot of respect for Coach, Trump, Coach Sprinkle. And, and, um, and again, I, here's one of the nice things say, they've got a ton of guys who can shoot threes, but a lot of them only take, you know, Couple shots a game because you're they're, they're, they're just so focused on on teamwork and each other that you see no uh, no selfishness at all on their part and that a lot of that goes back to him and and how he's uh, coached that team and his leadership. Hey, Coach Jared Johnson, inside the Red Raiders. You talked about Montana State and their style some, but I'm curious in preparing for this game, did they remind you of anybody else in the Big Twelve or any of the other teams that you played this year? Uh, they they are uh, extremely well getting to the free throw line, and uh, you know again their, their their pace is is a little bit slower. Um, you know maybe you know they've got uh, you know I don't know I, I, I see a little bit of uh, of some stuff that Kansas State does the way they share the ball and then um, but you know they uh, you know I don't know, I just they've got probably some some ingredients of uh, TCU as well that I see. With a really big guy inside, but 
but more than anything, yeah, this there is their comp they're just so competitive. You know, they they really compete hard and that's why they've won so many games. And you know, you, you, you just don't like I never like playing a, a coach that their teams play hard and getting better. You know, I think that's a mark of a pretty good coach and that's what Coach Sprinkle's done. These teams they they continue to get better and they're playing hard every game. Hi, Coach. Alex Eshelman with ABC Fox Montana. This is a slightly silly question off the topic of basketball, but I asked the three players up here if they have been to Montana, and if not, if they didn't knew anything about the state. And all three of them said, nope, I have no idea. Do you, have you ever been? I hope they still said nice things about Montana. <laughs> it's a pretty state. So. And have you been, and do you know anything about the state? That is a, I'm not saying it's a silly question. It's a good question. I don't think I've ever, maybe I don't think I've ever been to Montana. I've seen tons of pictures. I'd like to go someday. It's a beautiful, beautiful state, but uh, I don't know if I've personally been there and experienced that. Yeah, Coach Brady King, Fox 34 in Lubbock again. Um, you mentioned it being kind of surreal to see your name play on there. Has it has it hit you that you guys are here, and how do you kind of maintain the excitement of the guys, but also staying locked in for tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, you just turn on, you know, uh, sports, and any, and you're going, you know, it's it's uh, everybody's talking about the March Madness and the tournament and and so it's all around us. I think our bigger question right now is how we stay focused, not get distracted by all this attention and the social media and the interviews and and the teams that can handle that are the teams again they're gonna gonna survive and advance and all. So but back to your question, well did did they ever have they ever been to Lubbock? Any the any I really actually Well good for you, I'm glad did they any of them been to I didn't ask that, but I just don't Well you need to do that. So uh, Joseph White, Dallas Morning News. Uh, Kevin was obviously on the flip side of a first-round matchup last year, being an underdog, a 15 seed that went on a run. Now he's on your side, and he said he learned that you know you can't any team can beat anyone at, at this stage. I guess is that an easy resource or talking point for you to tap into, or do you even need it with this? No, team? no, no, no question. We um, we all talked to to, uh, to Ko about it, to Kevin and and ask him what he'd learned, and and uh, we're we're always trying to share experiences and and. Uh, so, you know, everybody's, you know, as a, those that have played in this tournament are a valuable resource to us, and we want to get their opinion. And, and uh, yeah, he was, uh, you know, just uh, just talked about how uh, his feelings and all, and it was enlightening. I thought it was very informative. Our guys learned from it. This will be the last question. Carlos Silva, love a Kevin Lynch Journal. Coach, I noticed uh, Clarence was in a walking boot. Was that a practice injury, or is he all right, or I guess what's his status? Yeah, it, um, yeah I think, well, he was – he had injured it earlier, and then the last game against Kansas, he re-injured it. So, he, yeah, he's been in the boot most of this week, and this is his first day of practice. So, he, we'll, but, but he is back, and we'll, we'll see at game time if he's going to play or not. Carlos. All good. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you. Good luck. Recording of the press conference will be available on the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts provided by ASAP. Thank you. Jordan Shackle. Yeah.
flash photography is prohibited. Announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Uh, limit of one follow-up and raise your hand so we can see you and get the microphone to you. Student athletes here for Alabama Crimson Tide, the number six seed in the West. Jaden Shackelford, Keon Ellis, Noah Gurley, Javon Quinterly, and J.D. Davison. No opening statement. Begin with questions from the media. I'm sorry. It's Mike Rodak from AL.com. Just for any of the players to start, just what do you feel like you have to prove tomorrow when you play Notre Dame? Um, I don't feel like we have too much to prove. You know, I feel like you know, that comes with how your season went. And, you know, we're just going out there with, you know, a fresh mindset to go in and play our hardest. So I don't feel like we necessarily have anything to prove. But, you know, we got to go out there and prove to ourselves that we can go out there and play for 40 minutes, play hard, and give our best effort. Anybody else want that one? I mean, kind of the same thing. Uh, I don't think we have anything to prove. Uh, we, Everyone knows what we've done this year. Um, so, but all that is in the past and just got to, come out and prove it again uh, in the March Madness tournament. Jerry Carino from the Bergen Record in New Jersey. Javon, your hometown paper. Uh, what was it like growing up, uh, learning the game in North Jersey, playing for Hudson Catholic, and how does that impact you on a player as a player on this level? Um, that's a good question. Um, it's definitely different. Um, basketball in New Jersey is probably the best it's been in a really long time right now and you know the p past couple years um you know going to new york and playing in the parks and things of that nature has made me the player i am today and you know gave me that toughness that you need at this level and um you know was, I, I miss i miss being home and you know i'm just glad i'm here where i am right now and um you know it's definitely played a a, a vital role in you know, the player I am today. One more for you, Javon. Uh, the, uh, your opponent could have been Rutgers, and I'm sure you know some of those guys. Just curious, who do you know on that team? And Did you watch the game last night, and what did you think of it? Everyone in New Jersey is talking about it. Yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm close with Ron Harper, uh, Geo Baker. I, I pretty much know everybody on that team. You know, Brandon Knight, assistant coach, who recruited me um, pretty hard. So, yeah, I watched that game last night. It was crazy. Um, you know, I, I text Ron after the game, just let him know he had a great season, and you know I'm excited for his future. And um, you know, at this point, you know I'm just excited to be back in the NCAA tournament, and, you know, fight with these guys and try and go out there and win the championship. Nick Kelly, the Tuscaloosa News. Uh, question for you, Jaden. Uh, Coach Crow, what, what did he mean to, or what does he mean to you, and, and how did he help you become the player you are today? Uh, you know, he, he means a lot to me. He kind of, you know, got me, <coughs> got me going with all like my EYBL stuff. You know, before I got to college or whatnot. You know, he's played a huge role in being a mentor for me. Uh, you know, he's taught me a lot of things, and you know, it's, it's cool to be back on the West Coast where all these people can come see me again. So, you know, he, he played a vital role in you know me getting recruited and. You know, getting to where I am now. So, you know, big ups to him and what he's done for me. Mike Rodak from AL.com. Again, just for Jaden, I think we asked you before you left, but just your family, you know, potentially coming down from, from L.A., just what's it been like to have them around and what would it be like tomorrow? Uh, you know, I've been in contact with all of them. You know, like I said, it feels great to be back here on the West Coast. And, you know, a lot of my family and friends are going to be able to come and, and see us play. So, you know, it means the world to me to be able to play in front of them. And, you know, it's just... It's just another opportunity for, for us to be great in front of in front of our fans. Sean Titel from HoopsHD.com. Uh, for any of you who played in the Sweet 16 overtime loss to UCLA, what did you learn from that game that you think will help you this time around? Um, I'll go. Um, yeah, that, uh, obviously, you know, free throws is a big thing. Um, I feel like that's something that we've improved on a lot this year. And still can keep improving on that. Um, but really, like, what it comes down to is, like, this is a game of runs. Um, like, you just got to be able to answer runs at this level. And, um, you know, that's something that we've been talking about, you know, amongst ourselves and in practice. And, you know, just being able to respond to adversity at this level because, you know, it's, it gets crazy at this, at this stage. So just making sure, you know, guys who haven't been here are prepared and, 
Uh, we just give as much knowledge as, as we can, you know, being the older guys and being being guys who, who played in that in that atmosphere before. We'll get it over to you. Uh, hi, uh, Bruce Pascoe for the Arizona Daily Star. Javon, I know it's been, I know you guys are in a different bracket uh, completely and focused on a different game, but I was just wondering, being from Arizona, if you'd, you know, long, long time ago you'd committed there and, and if you ever kept up with them or kind of wondered what might have been, you know, a lot of things happened with them, a lot of things happened with you since then. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't been following them as much as I used to, obviously, uh, focused on my season, but, um, you know, I got I got family who goes to Arizona, so you know I'm kind of in the loop every now and then. They got a really good team this year, um, but yeah, other than that, you know I haven't really been following Arizona like that. Any other questions for the student athletes? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank good you, luck. Sir. Thank you. The press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub, ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you. And I used to subscribe to the Bergen Record, so.
All right, everybody, uh, silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Limit of one follow-up. Raise your hand so we can see and get to the microphone. And uh, we will begin with an opening statement from head coach Nate Oates. Excited to be here. It's a great city to play in. Excited to be back in the uh, NCAA tournament again. It's nice. Uh, I mean, it was great that we pulled the tournament off in the bubble last year, but it's nice to be in a city where you can get out and enjoy parts of the city. And, you know, this isn't the first time we've been sent out west. When I was at Buffalo, we got sent to uh, Boise, which was great to us, and got sent to Tulsa. Now they've sent us even further west. So we're enjoying the weather here in San Diego. Our guys are excited to play in a tournament again, and we're looking forward to hopefully a couple good games here in San Diego and ready to get the thing tipped off tomorrow. All right, questions? Start over there. John Titel from HoopsHD.com. You have the number one strength of schedule in the nation this year. Was it a happy accident? And if not, is this the week that you hope that it's set up for? Yeah, I hope it pays off this week. It, it certainly paid off in getting us into the tournament. You know, our it wasn't an accident. We, we scheduled hard on purpose. You know, we tried to schedule to get ourselves into the tournament. That's what happened. We scheduled team like Gonzaga, you know, you can't get a win against Gonzaga if you don't schedule them. So, you know, we played well that game in Seattle. We scheduled a team like Houston, got a series with them. You know, so you beat two Final Four teams we scheduled. The SEC Big 12 Challenge gave us the Baylor game. That uh, gave us three Final Four teams from last year, and two of those three are number one seeds right now, and we got wins over all three of them. You know, and then our, our bye games were tougher games you know we Davidson came to Birmingham to play us we lost the game but they end up winning the uh, A-10 I mean it, it, even the less lesser if you will opponents were, were a lot of them made the NCAA tournament South Dakota State you know there's a lot of turn half of our games were played against tournament teams so I think we're battle tested hopefully it pays off this week it certainly paid off in getting us into the tournament uh, Nick Kelly with the Tuscaloosa News. Uh, just note, now that you know it's Notre Dame, I mean, what stands out? And, and one thing, too, with their turnovers, they don't have many of them. What do you guys need to do to uh, make sure they don't get too comfortable offensively? Yeah, I mean, they're a really good team. They, they shoot to beat Rutgers last night. Rutgers is tough. I mean, if you look at all the win, wins Rutgers had, you know, middle of the season, end of the season, for them to beat Rutgers in a game like that showed you how tough they are. They don't turn the ball over your right. They had five turnovers last night. We, we haven't been a team that turns people over much anyway. So, you know, some teams handed us a few more. Most teams turned it over more than five times. But, you know, we do have to try to make them a little uncomfortable. The issue with that is that they're smart enough and they handle it well enough. If you try to get overly aggressive against them, they're going to make you pay, you know, go back door or whatever. We, we don't want to give them open shots. They, they don't miss too many open shots either. But they're a high IQ, really talented offensive group. You know, on the defensive end, they uh, they don't foul much. They're smart that way, um, and and you know they kind of keep you in front. They're they're one of the better teams in the country at forcing you into long twos. Well, we're one of the better teams in the country at not taking too many mid-range shots. It's going to be kind of a battle on that deal. Can we get to the rim? Can we get threes off against the way they play? You know, and if you look at the way they play offensively, they got seven players. The only one that doesn't take and make a lot of threes is their starting center, Atkinson, who was their leading scorer against Rutgers. So he's a really talented player. He's player of the year in the Ivy League. So they got seven really good players that are out there on the floor in their, in their rotation. They played seven guys in the double overtime game last night. They're not quite as deep as we are, and they're coming off having to play Wednesday and then Friday. Hopefully we can get into their depth a little bit. But they control tempo pretty well, too, and don't play particularly fast. And I'm sure they'll try to do that again uh, tomorrow. And Mike Rodak from AL.com. There's been a couple of your last opponents have expressed some eagerness about playing you, whether it's Scotty Pippen or, or Cormac Ryan last night. Just what do you feel like you have to prove about? I missed. What, what did Cormac say? I he didn't said he see can't that. wait to play Alabama, is, is what he said. Um, just in terms of being a tough team to play at this time of year, what do you think you still have to prove as a team? Yeah, I, I don't know the context of Cormac's thing, so I don't want to talk too much to that. I mean, everybody can't wait to play the next game in March. You, you know, they shoot. Their whole team should be excited to play us. They, you know, they almost went home. I mean, it went to two overtimes, so they're excited to play anybody sitting on the other end of it. You know, Scotty Pippen's statements were obviously a little bit more like they wanted us because they had lost to us at their place. And 
you know, if it's something where they, they wanted Alabama, then our guys can use it for a little extra motivation. That's fine. But at the end of the day, you know, Pippen's statements may have motivated our guys more. We, you still have to go out and play the right way and win the game. I mean, they, our kids played hard, but we didn't play very smart. We followed them a lot, put them to the free throw line, and it's not good basketball. So whatever they need to do to motivate themselves, they, they, they can't just be motivated to play hard. We also have to play smart, play the right way, and do it without fouling on the defensive end. So, yeah, I wasn't even aware of Cormac. He's a good player, though. Shoot, they got a lot of good players on Notre Dame's team. Nate, Jerry Carino from the Bergen Record in New Jersey, writing about Javon. For, for lack of a better way of putting it, how much Jersey or New York do you see in his game, and how does that sort of influence the way your team plays? Yeah, obviously he's one of those point guards from New York, New Jersey area with all kinds of skill, talent. He's really good with the ball, comes downhill. He's great off the dribble. He's got some swagger to him. When he's, when he's playing well, he's got as much swagger as anybody in the country. He's kind of this you know, New York City point guard you're talking about. He's not from New York City, but New Jersey, New York area. Uh, when he's on his game, he's as good as any point guard in the country. And I think he's been locked in pretty good here for about three, four weeks. He was great last year in March. He was SEC tournament MVP. We're, we're hope, you know, I thought he was going to have another great SEC tournament. We didn't get the chance to play more than the one game. He was in foul trouble. I mean, he never fouls out of a game. Our whole team was in foul trouble that game, so it was unfortunate we didn't get a chance to really see what we could do in the SEC tournament. We're going to hopefully get a chance to show what we can do in the NCAA tournament. And I, he's going to be a big part of what we do. And he's, I mean, he kind of makes us go. He, he creates offense for a lot of our other players. Uh, Dane O'Neill at The Athletic. Nate, I know you guys have, you know, as you mentioned, struggled sometimes with consistency and, and, and decision making in games. I know they know that there is no margin for error at this time of the year. But how do you drive that point home? Because it's, you know, it's 40 minutes and the decisions will kill you. Yeah, it's a great question if I had all those answers. I probably tried to sprinkle the magic potion on them a little sooner than now. But I, and we've, been taught, we've been trying to simplify it. I think sometimes you overthink things, complicate matters. To really get back to what you did when you started playing in elementary. Like on offense, we're going to take care of the ball. Like don't, we don't need home runs. Just make a bunch of singles. We're one of the better offensive rebounding teams in the country. If we get a shot up on the rim, we've got a chance to score. So let's take care of the ball and get a shot up. Let's make our layups. The Vandy game, we were 50% at the rim. That's not good enough to win against good teams. Take care of the ball, make your layups, make your free throws. And we didn't make our free throws at a high clip against Vandy either. I mean, it's real simple stuff. But if we'd have done any of those three just a little bit better, we'd have beat Vandy. If we'd have done any of those three a little bit better, we'd have beat LSU. Those are our last two games. They're both good teams that we lost to. You know, and then on the defensive end, I thought we played hard enough to win in the, both those games. So we can't lose sight of the fact we did a lot of things well in those games. But it's more than playing hard at this level. you got to play hard, be locked into the scouting report, and execute it, and do it without fouling. Like, fouling's not smart basketball. So we got to be a little smarter, not just play hard, fly around, and do dumb stuff on defense. Let's show some IQ as well. So we've tried to simplify it a little bit. You know, let's not over amplify the game. We know you lose, you go home at this point. Like, there's no sense in over analyzing that part of it. Let's just let's have some fun. This is this tournament's fun. It's back in front of full crowds again. That's Another big reason it's fun. So let's have some fun while we're doing it. You know, at Buffalo, we were able to win two first round games. You know, one of them was an upset, one we were favored in. The, you know, here, we were able to win two last year. It was a little different in the bubble, but, you know, I think get you guys to relax, have fun, simplify it a little bit at this point of the year. And I think they can uh, go out and execute without putting any added pressure on themselves. Any other questions for Coach Oates? Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Roll, roll Tide. Got it in there. Dana knows about that. The recording of the press conference available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub, ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you.